have been reduced um, by law down to where we're actually only collecting 20 mills um, because of a House bill called 920 which was passed in the late 80s I believe and um, so really for the general fund we collect 20 mills um, and several years ago we moved the inside millage that is allowed by the Ohio Constitution or um, given to the schools by the Ohio Constitution of 4.6 mills for Columbiana was moved to the Permanent Improvement Fund and those dollars are used to repay the debt on the high school and then also now on the securities that we refinanced and issued to renovate um, Dixon Elementary. So the 4.6 mills is, is tied up for debt repayment. Exhibit 1, which is the third page in the budget, it begins the general fund um, information. And it basically gives us three years of um, historical information. Um, it includes this fiscal year, the projections for this fiscal year, and then the tax budget itself is really for the 14-15 school year. Um, so that is provided there as well. And then it also extends out an additional six, six months into the fiscal year 16 school year. Um, again, as I said, the, the figures are pretty much the same as what is in the five-year forecast. Um, the purpose of the tax budget is to support the the need for tax dollars. So if we were, you know, to have a tax budget and we're, we're saying we're going to have $50 million carryover balance, we're obviously, you know, not using the tax dollars that are um, collected each year. But that is not the case um, in Columbiana. And um, so we definitely show the need for all of the taxes that are um, that are um, assessed each year. And um, Exhibit 2 is the, the next, and that's debt service. And at this point, we really, we, um, the debt service fund is being phased out because it, in, in the past years, it's been used for the library bond issue that um, actually expired. Um, so really, all we're doing is there is spending the runoff dollars from that, so then the debt service fund will really go away after this fiscal year. Exhibit two um, on 
the capital project is the permanent improvement dollars and that that supports the tax dollars of the 4.6 mills that I mentioned um, that uh, repay the uh, securities on the high school in Dixon and you'll see that there on the exhibit 2 um, entitled capital projects at the top and that that generally shows how much we expect to collect in taxes and shows the expected expenses from that which are mainly just the debt or the lease repayments for the building projects and then exhibit three goes into the other funds in the district and that is really only for the 2014-15 school year what we anticipate to have going into the school year what we anticipate to spend in each fund and what we anticipate the balance to be in those funds that's really just for informational purposes um, nothing real out of the ordinary with that either um, exhibit four um, it's just required that we list um, capital outlay that's expected to be spent um, from the general fund we expect about 127,000 in capital outlay that includes generally computer um, replacements um, maintenance uh, capital projects that we would have and then um, in the permanent improvement fund uh, we have the monies there again for the uh, building projects and then the last exhibit is um, any debt service that is paid for out of the general fund and that is a small energy conservation loan that was taken out in conjunction with the Dixon building project and that uh, gets repaid through the general fund um, at this point I know I went over that very fast and not in great detail but if anybody has any questions I would um, take those at this point so the capital projects Lori are basically the high school and Dixon correct and those are shown on exhibit two on the second page on exhibit two is that, is yes. that correct yes all right so that shows revenues and then expenditures under capital outlay are those those two projects or does that include also other tangible personal property equipment whatever that may be purchased generally that because of it being a tax budget and, and needing to um, needing to show a need right. for the taxes generally I plug in some money there in capital outlay to show that you know future dollars are going to be allocated to um, to spend any balance that could potentially be remaining generally with the permanent improvement fund the way the debt is structured it's structured so we're going to build a little bit of dollars in mm -hmm. there and then the payments continue to go up as the tax revenue goes up over the years so generally we're going to kind of build a somewhat of a uh, carryover balance there to help offset future payments so for the tax budget purpose generally I put capital outlay to basically zero out that fund just so there are no you know no doubt that we will spend that those dollars basically that's a future allocation for those dollars for the debt service okay and the other expenditure on that exhibit to lease payment building is that on the that's on the high school that's both the high school and Dixon, and Dixon okay. mm -hmm. and again same as with the five-year budget when you start projecting out beyond this year it's a projection it's not fact we don't know for certain what those revenues are going to be we have no idea what the income tax receipts will be nor property tax next year right yeah okay. I mean they're based on historical and um, you know factors that I've built in you know whether it be a 1% increase or you know building is on an income tax um, assuming that there's going to be somewhat of an increase but obviously I don't know what that increase will be until those dollars come in okay all right thank okay. you anybody else
Okay, I'll close the budget hearing and we can move on to the organization meeting. Okay, I call this meeting to order. The Records Commission meeting, um, basically what we're, what the purpose of that is, is to just authorize me to um, dispose of records in accordance with our um, pre-approved policy that we approved several years ago, or the schedule that we approved several years ago. And we're required by law to update that each year um, to just say that we've Talk talked about it, basically. And then I would bring any changes to you if there had been any changes, but there have not been any changes. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's stand for the pledge of five. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Karen, Mr. Clark, and this is what we're pleased right. And I'm just going to read this, and if you agree, um, once I've completed the um, swearing in, just answer, I do. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as member of the Board of Education of Columbiana Exempted Village School District, Columbiana County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and here and after to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified. If so, if so please say, I do. I, I do. do. Thank you. Call the roll. Karen? Here. Clark? Here. Hudson? Here. Roncom? Here. Whitmer? Here. Item number six. Make a motion that we adopt the agenda. I second it. Discussion? Call the roll. Hudson? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Ronco? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Motion passes. Item number seven. Election of officers for 2014. Nominations. President. I'd like to nominate uh, Mark Hudson, Mr. President. Roll call vote for President. I'll second that. Call the roll. Clark? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Hudson? Same. Bronco? Yes. Motion passes. Nominations for Vice President. I nominate Tony Roncone. Second that. Discussion? Call the roll. Wimmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Roncone? Abstain. Motion passes. Item number eight. Consider requiring that all resolutions of the board be numbered consecutively as they occur during the year. No second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Clark? Yes. Bronco? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Item number nine. Motion passed. Oh, motion passed. <laughs> okay. Item number nine. Like to make a motion to consider the following resolution be resolved that the treasurer of Columbia and exempted village 
Board of Education shall invest all available funds of the said board at the most productive rate of interest as permitted by law. I'll second that. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Item number 10. I'd like to make a motion to consider a resolution on authorizing borrowing, whereas when there is an insufficient amount of money in the Treasury to meet current monthly operating expenses of the school district, and whereas it is necessary to obtain funds from some source in order to meet said deficiencies and incur, be it resolved that the Treasurer of the Columbiana Exempted Village School District, Columbiana County, Ohio, be authorized to borrow the necessi necessary amount up to $100,000 from the bank that offers the most advantageous rate of interest per annum, annum the loan to be solely made against anticipated receipts of property taxes and income tax exclusive of the tangible personal property tax receipts and said loan not to carry over the end of the current fiscal year nor be made under any borrowing authority that may exist pursuant to the provisions of section 133.301 of the Ohio Revised Code. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Call the roll. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Ron Cameron? Yes. Motion passes. Item 11. Consider resolution authorizing the request of an advance of tax monies. Be it resolved that the Treasurer of the Columbia and Exempted Village Board of Education is hereby authorized to secure advances of tax monies from the County Auditor when funds are available and payable to the school district. I'll second that motion. Discussion? Call the roll. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Ron Cameron? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Motion passes. Item 12. I'd like to make a motion to consider a resolution authorizing payment of bills. Be it resolved that the treasurer is hereby authorized to pay all bills when due within the limit of appropriations. I'll second that. Discussion? Call the roll. Clark? Yes. Ron Cohn? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes. Item 13. We can make a motion to consider a resolution authorizing modification of appropriations be resolved that the treasurer is hereby authorized to make necessary appropriation modifications to keep the budgetary accounts in balance as the need arises. I second it. Discussion? Call the roll. Ron Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes, item number 14. I move to consider a resolution to designating depositories. Be it resolved that all banks that have an office in Ohio that maintain FDIC insurance are designated as acceptable depositories for the Columbia and Exempted Village School District for the purpose of purchasing certificates of deposit. I'll second it. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Ron Cummings? Yes. Motion passes. Item 15. Consider <coughs> setting dates, times, and places for meetings for each regular meeting of the board for 2014. These shall be as follows. January, which is today, Tuesday, 1-14-14, in the CHS Media Center at 6.30 p.m. February, Tuesday, 2-11-14 at 6.30. March, Tuesday, 3-11-14, 6.30. April, Tuesday, 4-15, 14, 6.30. May, Tuesday, 5-13, 2014. June, Tuesday, 6-10, 2014. July, Tuesday, 7-8, 2014. August, Tuesday, 8-12, 2014. September, Tuesday, 9-9, 2014. October, Tuesday, 10-15, 14. November, Tuesday, 11-4, 2014. And December, 2014, or 12, December 12, or December 9, uh, 2014. I'll second that. Discussion? 
Call the roll, please. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Romko? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Motion passes. Item 16. Make a motion to consider resolution establishing a service fund as provided in Ohio Revised Code 3315.1. Be resolved that the service fund of the Board of Education of Columbia and Exempt Village School District be established at four thousand dollars. I'll second that. Discussion. Call the roll, please. Clark. Yes. Roncom. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Hudson. Yes. Whitmer. Yes. Motion passes. Item seventeen. To make a motion to consider establishment of rates of reimbursement for expenses incurred by district employee unless established otherwise in a negotiated agreement while traveling on prior approved school business as follows. I'll second that. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Bronco? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Henson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 18. I move to consider resolution establishing the following city cash fund as listed below. The treasurer shall be the custodian of this fund. I second that motion. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Farmhouse? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 19. Consider appointing Lori Posey, treasurer, as designee for public recording or records training for each board member and hereby directing her as such to attend public record training sessions on behalf of, this, of the board as required by law. I'll we'll second that. Discussion? Call the roll. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Rumpkow? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 20. <clears throat> Make a motion to consider the resolution authorizing the superintendent to hire staff between board meetings. Be resolved to authorize the superintendent during periods when the board is not in session to make offers of employment directly to candidates for either teaching or non-teaching positions on behalf of this board and to acknowledge the acceptance of such offers on behalf of this board. Subject to subsequent vote of ratification by this board. Provided, however, that upon ratification by this board, the employment shall be deemed effective as of the date and time of the employee's acceptance of the superintendent's offer. Nothing in this resolution shall require the Board of Education to employ or continue to employ an individual who has not provided a criminal records check satisfactory to the board, who has not satisfied any other prerequisites to employment created by law or board policy. The authorization provided by this resolution shall commence on January 2014 and it remain in effect through January 2015. Outside. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Clark? Yes. Brown County? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 21. To make a motion to consider the resolution authorizing the superintendent to accept resignations between board meetings. Be it resolved to authorize the superintendent on behalf of the board to accept resignations which may have been submitted by employees during the times when the board is not in session, subject to ratification by this board. Provided, however, that upon ratification by this board, such resignations shall be deemed effective as of the date and time of the superintendent's acceptance. The authorization provided by this resolution shall commence on January 2014 and remain in effect through January 2015. I second it. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 22. Consider resolution authorizing superintendent to accept resignations between board meetings as listed below. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did I 22. <laughs> Consider resolution authorizing purchasing agent be it resolved that the superintendent of Columbia and Exempted Village School District is hereby authorized to act as purchasing agent for the Board of Education. Second that motion. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Whitmer? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Item number 23. 
Consider resolution authorizing the superintendent to make exceptions to the policy 5113 relative to providing transportation accommodations corresponding with board approved transportation routes to students living outside the school district boundaries. Second that. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Clark? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Motion passes item number 24. Make a motion to consider continuing the membership of the district and the inter tri county league, ITLCL, through the close of the 2014 15 school year and empowering the superintendent, high school principal, and athletic director to make necessary arrangements for the establishment of this athletic schedule. I'll second that. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Clark? Yes. Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Carey? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes. Item 25. To make a motion to consider appointment of delegate and alternate to the OSBA annual conference as provided by bylaw 0153. Okay. So I guess to nominate delegate Kelly Whitmer. Alternate Mark Hudson. Discussion? Do we have a second for that? Second. No. Discussion. <laughs> second. Second. Clark. Clark. Call the roll, please. Clark County? Yes. Clark? Yes. Karen? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Stan? Yes. Motion passes. Item 26. Consider approving the fee schedule for 2014 facility use for the building use form provided with this agenda. I'll second that. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Whitmer? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Clark Yes. Item 27, can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? That motion passes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second it. Who made the motion to adjourn? Mark? That Mark would be... Second. I can make that motion, I suppose. <laughs> Any discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call please. Hudson? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Mark Cohn? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. That motion passes. The organizational meeting is now adjourned. Okay, item number three, I need a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll second. Okay. Discussion? No discussion? Roll call, please. Whitmer? Yes. Markham? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carter? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Item number four, superintendent's report, and that motion passed. <laughs> okay. All right. Come on. Okay, January is a school board recognition month, and the Columbia Exempted Village School District will take this opportunity to thank our local leaders as they devote time to support public schools public education, and serve our schools. School board members work countless hours contrib contributing to our schools for all children in the Columbiana school system. They have been elected by the community to work as a public servant to serve Columbiana and has this school system in mind as they work to have a fair and consistent school system for its constituents. Board members face critical challenges in their roles as advocates and they will continue to stand strong and guard against anything that takes away from the children and undermines our public school. 
Even though they are making a special effort in January to show appreciation to our board members, we realize their many contributions reflect year -round, a year-round commitment. They generously give themselves to ensure that the decisions directly affect our schools are made by representatives of this community, people who they are close to our schools and know the teachers, parents, and students are at the forefront. Their ultimate goal is always focused on the future of success of the children in Columbia, of the Columbiana Exempted Village School District. At this time, I'd like to recognize each of our Board of Education members with a carnation and a certificate of exemplary leadership and service to Columbiana Schools. Scott Karen. Service. Thank you. Mr. Mark Hudson in his fourth year of service. Senior veteran of five years, Kelly Whitman. And I, and I also have, uh, although they're not here tonight, uh, I'd like to recognize Dr. Jay Ertel in his time that he's committed to the district over a 10 year period, and Mr. Randy Guy uh, leaving, leaving uh, the board after eight years. So we'd like to thank both of them as well. Before we talked about weighted grades and, and moving forward, uh, we, we did want to wait till after uh, election and, and, and have a uh, current board who will be faced with the challenges of, of what to do and what's best for our, for our students. Uh, weighted grades are one of those things that we believe are uh, um, something that would be to the advantage of Columbiana students. And, and I have a couple things up there. Um, you were provided a document that later on you're going to you're going to uh, have in the agenda um, that has the details here. But some of the things that I want to just touch base on so that you have a, an understanding of what weighted grades are and why why we might have them. Um, first of all, they provide for a fair and balanced top ten valedictorian and salutatorian, and I'll get into how that works. Um, 51% of colleges do not recalculate GPAs. They take what schools give them. Um, we are on a current four-point system, and our students compete for uh, with other districts for merit scholarships and things that are out there on a four-point system when they may be on a weighted system. And uh, I'll show you how, how that may look with different types of courses that may be taken. But... Um, when, when our kids who take the most challenging courses with AP courses, with um, calculus, chemistry, physics, um, essentially are competing with kids who are getting weighted grades in other districts for those same courses. Uh, students who take a more rigorous course are rewarded with a higher GPA. Uh, we believe it minimizes the effect of students who take the AP courses because right now they're not taking them due to the fear of effect, of effect on the GPA. So if you take a, an AP course and get a B in it, and you take a regular course and get an A in it, you, you put yourself in that position to, to take the more rigorous course, the more challenging course, and, and that fear is it's more difficult 
why would I take that when my when the partner who I'm com who my my classmates who I'm competing against can take a, a lesser difficult path? And uh, I'll show you a little bit about what weighted grades might look like. It's really it's kind of tough to see it on this screen. I apologize, but this projector isn't working well with this this newer laptop. Um, your regular grades from A through F would be a calculated grade point a 4 for an A, a 3 for a B, a 2 for a C, a 1 for a D, and a 0 for an F. Where in a weighted position, they would be 1 up, 5 for an A, 4 for a B, 3 for a C, 2 for a D, and, and a 0 for a field course. Um, here's an example, and I'm going to have to, I'm gonna, since, since you can't see these very well, I'm going to have to point to what we're talking about. Um, a student taking a general science class gets an A, four point scale, they get four points in a weighted class would be a four. A student who takes a physics class who gets a B gets a three on a four point scale. A four on a weighted scale. So they've taken that more challenging course and on a weighted scale that, that fear factor of dropping the grade point below that four point average because they, they took the more difficult course is not there. Uh, but it also rewards students in the case of a calculus course. Here's a calculus course that they would get a four in a regular class for an A and a five in a weighted. So it rewards them for taking that more challenging course where someone in a, in a class that took an algebra one gets an A, they get a four, they get the same for a calculus course on that four point scale. So it rewards them in the sense for going out, taking that more challenging course, and getting that A. Um, I just went down here, band, history, English 11, French 3 would be a weighted course, yearbook, and uh, advanced PE, which would not be weighted. And that person that took these, these, this lesser with one really challenging course would get a 4.0 for getting all A's. Where, as this student here, who got all A's except for that one B, and I can't even read it, <laughs> would get a 3.875. And yet they took three challenging courses with chemistry, physics, and an upper level foreign language. Um, we've had students in Columbiana go through this and they take a certain number of courses that they're required to and then once they hit the, once one of their classmates gets a lower grade, they can sort of drop off and take just the courses they need to keep A's. The number of courses to get A's. Um, that's happened since I've been here. So some of the discussion that, that Mr. Hostetler and I have had have been centered around let's, let's get more numbers in our AP courses. Let's encourage kids to get out there and take the, the, the upper end math and the upper end science, the upper end social studies and English courses. This would be a, a way to do that. So you take that same 3.8 Eight five on a four point scale and it turns into a four point two zero for that particular semester um, because they're, they're taking more difficult courses. So that's in a sense kind of will give you an, and I'll print this out for you so you can really kind of look it over. But since we're we're we're, we're we've talked about it in the past uh, tonight, it's on the agenda. I wanted you to understand and be, be fairly clear about what the impact is on that. Now some of the things that Mr. Hostetler and I have talked about is implementation. And although we're looking at the, this freshman class would be fully aware of the courses, the advantages, we believe that the sophomore class potentially could go with eight courses. We're, we're recommending five courses in, at uh, a total of ten. Five in the junior year, five in the senior year as being available to them to take. We, we believe that four would be uh, appropriate for the sophomore group and we could probably implement 
before next school year, even with sophomores. Um, part of the problem we have in implementing earlier with, with, our, with our, our kids are that some of them making decisions on courses early on have already gone down these paths of here I am with my math and I've decided to go this direction because I think that this is going to put me with this particular GPA at this point in time on a four point scale sort of puts us behind the eight ball with trying to implement this for next school year for everyone. Um, we may look deeper into it to see if potentially the junior class has the option for some of that, but we think that, that this, this late for them, uh, they're, they're going to begin looking at their courses to decide for next year. Um, not understanding how this has been, it doesn't give them enough time to really look at this. So we, we think with the sophomores, a total of eight courses might, might be appropriate. Um, we, eight meaning that they can choose from math, social studies, science, English, and an upper level foreign language, but only four would count towards that. So if you're that person that chose that math direction early on and then didn't put yourself into that place to compete for that top, those top tens, those higher GPAs, um, that, that you won't be penalized because we're, we've moved to the system. Now, the advantage is if you look at just that, that semester grade, that 4.25 would be calculated into their, their current grade point average each semester. Uh, down the road, those kids that are applying for colleges are going to have a better opportunity if 51% of colleges aren't going to recalculate your GPA and you're competing for scholarships. We think it be for local scholarships now. And they miss out on some of the local ones simply because they've taken some of the top courses. They, they, their, their ACT scores are strong. Their SAT scores are strong. But some of those requirements are, are looking at the GPA, and that's what they're competing against. So we think it's to the advantage of our students to move to weighted grades, and that's why you're, you're, you're going to be looking at an opportunity to put that in place or allow, permit our principal to begin that process with students and getting them engaged in weighted courses. Any questions? Uh, the concept is pretty solid. I will tell you in my previous district, it worked very, very well and it did really engage students in taking the upper level classes. Uh, engage them in taking AP courses and engage them in taking um, the, the, the toughest of our curriculum which we want them to challenge themselves because when they challenge themselves they, they, they will tend to do better on ACT, SAT scores. So that's what I have for you for weighted grades. <coughs> Southside Middle School. Um, I know some of you probably will want to walk through it but I did create a short video and I'm going to, hopefully you'll be able to see it here. Um, this is essentially shown Southside Middle School and some of the issues that we're dealing with with the roof, with the water. Um, what you're looking at right now is the tile that came up from last school year. It's in the hallway. We replaced all the tiles, ceiling tiles. As you can see, many of those, because of some of the weather and the existing conditions on the roof, have caused saturation, they're, they're falling through. Um, some of those ones just fell today. Um, I, I did tell Mr. Marino, please leave that right now because we may walk through. And I want you to get an idea of what we've had to deal with over the past couple years with students and why we made some of the decisions not to utilize this section of the building. Um, there's, there's a lighting fixture out in front of the office that, that um, filled with water, caused it issues, but really you're looking at a lot of them. We put the ceiling tile, as we put the ceiling tile back in for fire reasons, uh, we wanted to air that out. It, you can see that just the, the, the ready to fall, this one's dripping. Um, we, we definitely have and continue to have some serious issues, and this is why we do <laughs> nice have students in these areas. This should give you a pretty good look. We did, this is from this, this, this afternoon. Mr. Marino and I went walked around the building and videoed some of the things for you to look at for consideration as we move forward.
forward trying to make determinations on where we need to go the South Side Middle School. This is a classroom. Um, fortunately, we've not had a lot of major spots of classrooms. Here's one of the ones that had water coming down in through the light fixture that we can't stop. This is a great shot of the bonding that's going on on our roof. Um, normally, you would not be able to get out and see this without having pictures, someone take pictures or video. So, regardless of whether we choose to walk through the building or not tonight, um, you're, you're getting, going to get a good look at the roof, which is which is pretty critical. You'll see that the, those white sections are painted from the folks who fix our roof. They're painted so that we don't step on them, or they don't step on them while they're up there because it's cracked. Um, they bubbled up, and you know, that rippling effect. If you step on it, it creates more damage on the roof. That's that, uh, that section out towards the back. Um, look at this back there. So this is our uh, over top of our music room, which we are currently using. Uh, just outside on top, this is that hallway that you saw all that water, all those issues with the ceiling tile. Um, and this is a real clear example of what one of those one of those pumps look like that are that if you step on it, it creates a major problem for a roof. Um, this is over top of the seventh and eighth grade, the current section we're using. You can still see that we have a great number of issues with that. We are just not experiencing leak right now. That's why we've been able to use that. You don't get nearly as ponding. This is standing on that section, looking down at the rest of the roof. As we look down through that area that goes over the office, the fifth and sixth grade section over there to, to the far right. I think with, with flat roofs, it may be typical sometimes that some bonding to take place. I'm just not sure this much of it takes place. Um, this is some of the other things that, that we were looking at fixing, some of the ceiling, some of the tile, the inserts in the cafeteria. Just to get an idea of the tile that needs to be done, some of them have been done with the odds and ends. This is uh, electrical box, phone system wiring. It's okay, no. it's not because I was in the boiler room. A lot of the things that we had planned to do with the bond issue, this is a critical issue here with the fire alarm system. This is the look inside of it, just how antiquated that it really is. Um, certainly would be part of, of the bond issue that we were, we were hoping to work on. Um, these units here are, uh, I think you call them Nesbitt units. Uh, they are the heating units in the classroom. We've already replaced six of them at Jimmy's work schedule just for parts, $120 each. Now, if we had to have somebody come in and do that, it costs us a great deal more. The case work in those classrooms are pretty similar throughout. This is an example of one of the classrooms and the doors and the area of what really needs a great deal more of attention if we had plans to fix through a bond issue. Um, this is ventilation in that 5th and 6th grade. The only ventilation is now the, that goes in and out of the room that's forced out through the rooms. Um, you can also see the cosmetic and whatnot of the, the middle school restrooms. Many of you have walked through this, many of you have seen this. This is really just a, a reminder of what it looks like, what we're dealing with, what are the things or issues that we have in front of us. Landscape of the office area. Uh, this is what welcomes our visitors to our middle school. This is the entrance that they generally come through, and this is the first thing they see when they come in. 
handicap accessibility. Um, we have a series of ramps, and you're going to see shortly a ramp that goes down to the bottom floor that we've tried to make wider for one of our students who had an electric wheelchair who had difficulty. We had to sand the walls, uh, sand down the end of the, the wall. Uh, I think over time that may have sunk in a little bit, but uh, maybe it was like that when it was first built. I can't imagine what it was, but that presents an issue of handicap accessibility with big feet. This is the ventilation of the 8th grade room from the 1969 edition. Um, this is a look up those stairs that, that we think at that location we probably could put a, an elevator in through that process. Right in that area and go down to all three floors. Um, would eliminate that, that uh, ramp system that, that is, is not very inviting, that's for sure. Probably would not pass now. This is a look at the lighting in the 7th and 8th grade. Uh, the terrazzo floors, however, are probably the best part of the whole building. Those terrazzo floors last forever. Very, very nice piece. So, that's just to give you an idea of what we have, what we're, we're looking at. I mean, we can go back down and take a walk through. Um, I think that gives you a pretty good idea of where we are. You know, Mr. Karen came through. We had the ceiling tile out. And uh, it looked much, much worse than it does at the moment. But, um, you know, we have some options. I think our options are, are a couple of, of ways. We can stay status quo. In other words, continue to patch Southside Middle School. You can see right now we patch Southside Middle School and what's still happening. It's leaking. They can only patch it so much. It's leaking down through to a point where it's causing more damage. Um, and keep the current grade levels in the buildings of where they are right now. We can replace Southside Middle School roof and make repairs. And go back to our middle school concept, our 5 through 8 concept, our, our K through 4 concept. Um, that's something we can do right now. We, 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 would, we would spend general fund. I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Um, we can attempt another bond issue. The May ballot would require us to have two special board meetings this month in order to get on the May ballot, or we can go on the November ballot if we choose to go on another bond issue. We failed three times now. Uh, we can replace the middle school roof and attempt the bond issue only to do the remaining renovation that needs to be done. And um, I guess what I'm saying is I would recommend to you that we fix this roof so we can use our facilities. Uh, we're in desperate need of space. Mrs. Sharshin's group uh, uh, building is bursting at the seams. We've, we've done everything we can to get to this point. We've lived through Another option at a bond issue. And not that I don't think that we need to, to have a bond issue, I just think at this point in time we need to, to protect the remainder of our facility. I think we need to do whatever is necessary to make sure that we don't continue down that path of, of deterioration. And the cost right now, what I'm looking for from the board is to say we need to do the roof or we, don't, or we need to do a bond issue. Because we've got to do one of those things. If we continue to limp through and patch it, it's going to continue to deteriorate like you're seeing right now. So what I'm asking you is, is, is to give me some direction to say, go get some estimates for the roof. Let's start securing the people and the personnel, whether it be architects or whatnot. You're looking at, I think Jimmy said, 400 40,000 square feet square feet of roofing. Um, early estimates, and we don't have written estimates because we've had people come and look at it and give us verbals. We're looking at anywhere from $350,000 to probably about $750,000. This is to do a flat roof. This is no longer 
looking at putting on a pitched roof like they have over at Joshua Dixon. You're talking about a million and a half or more. Um, and move forward. We would be spending general fund dollars to do that. Um, I've said since the beginning um, of, of the first bond issue, the moment we start spending the dollars out of the general fund is the moment we start moving closer to needing operating monies down the road. Now, I'm not saying that because we fix our roof, we're going to need operating monies next year, the year after. You, you're looking at our five-year forecast. You see where we are right now and how, how we sort of fade into five years away. What dollars look like. We don't know what our revenues will be. We don't know at this point completely that our expenditures are going to reduce. But we do know that from a standpoint of space in our district, we need the space. We just added an ED unit where we're combining classrooms with other with other classrooms. And we're going to be moving teachers on carts, and that'll be the next step if we continue to stay in our existing scenario. And if we we have some options in front of us. We can go for another bond issue, but right now our building's deteriorating. It continues to deteriorate. And I, I have a lot of concern for that. So if we if we repair the roof out of the general fund, the bond issue, if we were to put a bond issue on for less money, we can never recap the money we use out of the general fund. Correct. Correct. So it's an expenditure that goes away and it comes out, and now we're looking at our capital going down. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and Mr. Karen, I would tell you that um, Having gone through three bond issues already, just from my own feeling, and, um, I, I'm not going to tell you that I, I'm not, I won't roll my sleeves up again and go after it and do the best I can with, with our communities and get out and continue to show the, what's happening. Um, but I think we've got to make sure we don't let our building get into a position where we can't recover it, and, and I think we're moving that direction. Um, but you're right, the moment we spend money out of the general fund for that, we don't get it back by having a bond issue. We can't recover those dollars. They're gone. Now, I would tell you that if we fix the roof and then go after the renovation piece, it would be a less money because that would come out of that and we wouldn't be looking at a pit roof which was significantly more. Maybe our potential for passing the remainder of the renovation would be significantly higher. Maybe. And now we'd be asking for less money. I think you just answered a question that I was going to pose, which is, if we fix the roof, that's not all that needs to be done. Because fixing the roof isn't going to update the fire. Um, prevention system or the fire alarm, whatever you showed us to look like it had tubes in it. I'm not sure that I have a TV that old. Um, you know, that's not going to touch things like that, correct? Correct. Fixing the roof, it's going to be fix the roof and put new tile. All right. I right. have to replace insulation that may be wet. Any wet insulation would have, need to be replaced. Any wet tile. Um, you know, I, I would almost consider putting new tile in, but we, you know, we went back and replaced the tile. We, we probably purchased, I don't know, maybe thousand uh, dollars worth. Yeah, just to we spent about a thousand to replace the tile that needed to be replaced for fire uh, issues, and um, so some of it's new, but you know. We, we potentially could replace all the tile once we fix the roof because right. you can't you see what's happening to it now we put tile in those all those areas that are open spots and they've either caved in or saturated now to the point at which they're going to fall in um, summertime will help us no matter no matter what the situation is generally we don't have that kind of ice and snow and whatnot on the roof 
but we, we need the, the educational space. Um, fortunately for us, we're not losing students, and then that's, that's a real positive. Um, but we need the educational space. Our teachers are doing a great job, and I think they'll do a great job no matter what space they're in, but, uh, and they usually roll up their sleeves and do what they have to, but I think we just need the space, and we're, we're running out of space at Joshua Dixon. So one of the choices is spend general fund dollars on a building that was built in 1960 it has never been renovated. So we're going to put a new roof and new tiles, hopefully, on a building that the infrastructure is 50 years old. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that's why we were looking at a well, fund issue to fix this. Right. Problem. Well, the, the, the <laughs> point is, is if, this point is, is is for myself or anybody else to make a decision based on this. I feel as though that an architect would have to look at the building, look at the structure of which we have now, look at the roof of which we have now, and give us feasible estimates for how much it would cost and the longevity of that particular roof and, and the building will be thereafter so that we can make an educated decision as to what to do with that. But in my opinion, the most important thing is, is that we have to think about is in my opinion, is, is is the children, their education, and the buildings of which they're in to make sure that we're giving them the best education, the best building, the best facilities that we can possibly give them within the budgetary means that we have. That's, that's what we're here for. Although, although, the, the general public has an obligation also to participate within what takes place in our schools. They have, you know, they have to help us maintain these particular schools. I understand that the state has taken away our dollars and things like that and have taken away dollars and continues to take away dollars. Then again, you know, for us to use our budget and pull it out of the general fund, you know, that could hurt us later on down the road. And, and sometimes the general public doesn't understand these things of where we run and what it can do to us later on down the road. So all of a sudden we use this general fund money and then Three years down the road, we're going. Hey, we need a we need to pass a levy now, and we don't have the money to pay our teachers. Now, our our students and the education of our students is suffering, and I'm not. I, I just I'm not into that at all. So, um, yeah, and I, and I, and I agree with you. Everything you said is absolutely 100 percent positive. But what, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. The, the downside is this: is we look at open enrollment. I need to start considering not accepting open enrollment students because we are bulging at the seams in, in many cases. Um, that's where we're going to start getting into where it will hurt us by not doing anything with this facility because if you looked at the 7th and 8th grade portion of that roof, we're, although we're not getting leaks right now, it appears to not be much better than the other parts of the building. So we're headed down that path with that part. And we rely heavily right now on that section right now to, 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 to holding our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students. <coughs> I, I can't tell you that I'm not going to have to to look at not accepting some open enrollment students to push a 6th grade down to a Joshua Dixon and a 7th and 8th grade into the high school. Uh, I want to try to avoid that. I like the middle school concept. It works well for us. I think it works well. And unfortunately, we're posed with: do we invest some money into this facility, or do we just continue to, to limp by and, and hope the public will save us? They're, they've already told us three times they're not interested in saving us. So, in this case, I just think we have to do what's right to save to, to save that facility at this point. I agree with you, we need to spend the money on a, an architect to come in to evaluate it and give us the cost. But that money that we spend for the architect is not going away either. We're, we're not going to recoup that either. We would have if we passed the bond issue. Because right. we would have been able to spend for the architect to come in and do that under the bond issue. We don't have that, that luxury now. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we need, we need to have a, a an architect come in and, and give us costs, give us estimates, make sure we're not 
spending money in a facility that should be condemned, right? I don't think it's going to be condemned. I, I've been through it. I know that. I, I, I think that the roof stops that leaking. We can we can work on it from there. We can't do anything until we stop the water from coming in. Don, have you looked at all? Um, as you were just talking about, talking about the building being condemned, I was looking at all the water and getting a headache thinking about if I was in that building and it's that moist. You know, from a mold standpoint, you know, if we wait too long, then, then we're going we're gonna to have a potential issue from a health standpoint. I, I would tell you now as you walk through there, we have it separated right now. We have a, 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 a doorway right now we're using just to, to restrict access to that part of it because of the, the water so much. Um, there's a significant difference right now just from the 7th and 8th grade wing, that 1969 addition to the rest of the building. When you walk in, you you get that that sense of smell of musty right now. So we know we, we have to stop it or it's just going to continue to get worse. We don't see any, we haven't seen any evidence of molds or whatnot developing, but that doesn't mean that continued water problems are going to not stop that. Also, in the reference bond. to the bond, the bond issue, uh, with the, the things, because the, the public has said no several times, obviously. And, and part of it may be the total amount of money that we're asking for also. Could be. So, can we relook at the dollars that we're asking for and see that, that the things that we need to do are structured and set so that there's a possibility of savings that we can go for less money in order to to try to, to give the public a better eye for what we really need to do and, and to try to save them some money in their taxes because everybody's paying taxes and everybody's paying more taxes. Well, once we get into renovating the, or we get handcuffed by the fire codes, the ADH, the, I'm sorry, the handicap accessibility, the, all those things become major dollar figures for us that once you begin renovating, you have you, to meet them then. You have to meet all those minimum guidelines. The, the building right now, as it stands without renovation, is grandfathered into a whole lot of things that would not... That's why that firebox still stays the way it so is. So we don't have to put a fire suppression system in if we renovate, or do we have to we put do, a fire suppression system in? Oh, I see. Wow. Once we start making improvements, you have to bring it to code. You want to walk through it? Yeah. We can take that time to walk through it. Okay. Will you follow us or you can wait here? Try and make this not very long.
Mitsubishi units that we use at Dixon now actually bring in outside air and take out air out of the building. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? How are you doing? All right. How are you? Good. At least we're out of the floor. Yeah. Here's the area where we think we can do a potential uh, elevator. said no way we're not doing this again and that's why we said let's move the fifth grade down to Dixon are not available. Jimmy has to get a different kind of pump and 
try it or a motor, I guess it would be. He different kind of motor and so much money. jury rig it in to make it work. And he's done that in about eight to ten classrooms at this point because he can't get parts that actually fit the units that we have because they're outdated. You know, would you replace the ceiling tile in this room? Yeah. Of course you would. Absolutely. It looks terrible. Yeah. And, and have you got estimates to, to do the renovation, interior renovations of the building yet? No, we, we based all of our numbers on the bond issue off of what we did with square footage with Dixon. Yes. That was true numbers because all of that work was bid and we we paid those costs out. So we had pretty good numbers when we estimated because we had just completed that project. What <coughs> roof will save the, the rest of the building? Yes. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't change. Oh. Now, it doesn't mean it needs to be dirty, but you can't change this old stuff. This all this is stuff that would be replaced had we passed the bond issue. We would put new casework in here. We would put lockers or whatnot or casework in over there where you, where you're, they hang their coats. You know, when the kids came in through here for class, they had their books stacked up. We had milk crates, right, Elise? Remember? I do, I do remember. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, it just wasn't the best case scenario because there aren't lockers in this facility, this part of the facility. Yeah. So, casework would have replaced all this. This would not be re repaired that way. Now, it doesn't mean that teachers don't come in and decorate and make their rooms as right. welcoming as possible. It's just you, you get what you get at this point. But the roof eliminates this stuff from appearing and then we can slowly but surely make this stuff look presentable and, and okay and eliminate that water issue that may cause mold that may cause increased asthma issues and whatnot. Well I think we want to make sure that the general public understands that if we take money out of the general fund we don't put it back. We don't put it back. It's gone, and we don't have the extra money from what I see to spend. And, and, and I don't think the general public has, they think we have lots of money in the budget, and it's not. It's that's not. Been our, that's been our problem since the first bond issue. I don't know how we get that across the general public that we don't have all this extra money to spend to do these things, but it's a responsibility of the taxpayer to maintain the buildings of which they built since 1960 something when they were built. They paid 1961. Right. 62. Right. That's, that's what we need to see. Yeah, the problem is it's a 50 year old building. Right. And when I look around it, I can tell you all about my memories and I was a whole lot younger when I was in this building. But, you know, it's disgusting because now I'm looking at it and just since last spring when we tried to do the you know the Easter egg hunt that mm -hmm. event in here and I realized it wasn't cleaned up but this thing this building is starting to deteriorate and deteriorate fast mm -hmm. you know I don't think the public understands that their idea is, is taxes are a difficult thing make do but I think the problem is, and the disconnect is, we really can't make do with this building the way it is. And you just told us we can't continue to operate on two buildings or we're going to basically be out of the middle school concept, which I think is a concept that's been around how many years now. And we're going to go back to an elementary and a high school. And that's apparent out of my seventh or eighth grader in high school. Oh, not that age. No, they're not prepared to be in that. No, they that's aren't. why we have a middle school to bring them up through, so they can get educated in a different way, so they're prepared for high school. Yeah. Well, the reason I showed you the roof for the seventh and eighth grade is, wing is because the thought process is, is not this stuff's not happening there, and it, and it sort of isn't because they've been able to patch it to a point at which it's not leaking. But look at the issues. The same issues are beginning to develop there that are, are prevalent here. 
It's only seven or eight years newer. Mm -hmm. 69. Not exactly, yeah, That's right. 69. It's not exactly a whole lot newer than this is. Mm -hmm. Well, so that building we can save now. Yeah. By a roof. That building can be saved right now. This one, well, we can save, but it's going to take work. Here, here's the problem. The, the boiler system is part of this facility. Yeah, it's oh, all gotcha. one. Okay. So you you, you, you lose that. that. Oh, this. Oh, yeah, without this. So. That was added on as an addition to the middle school to basically bring the middle school concept. You brought seventh and eighth grade back from the high school where they had always been. You know, then if we don't do that, then we are sep then we are faced with the separation issues of how do you how do you function with seventh and eighth grade in the current high school setup. You know, we have a lot of blending already: the band room, the gyms. Right now, we're using the commons, so we have a lot of blending. It's not that we have the terrible ways of handling kids. We we, we can do whatever we have to do, but. I don't want to see us go that direction. That's why I'm recommending that we we get this roof taken care of and start using this facility again, and we'll we do what we can do. And if you want to start walking back, I don't know if you want to look at the boiler room, but it's not nothing really to look at. But that's what I'm to light <laughs> <laughs> so it's better from the last time you toured it with the ceiling. Oh my gosh. It was like, uh, <laughs> what is it? they call that Freddy Krueger. <laughs> that made a great horror movie in here when all the ceiling tiles were down. Oh, there you go, you guys. Oh, it would have been unbelievable for Halloween in here. Oh, we could have done a haunted house. That's what we should have done. Yeah. Money Raise our money it. that way. <laughs> we could have done that. $100 a minute. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> Well, we had one at school. All of which was to decorate. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't have taken much. No pain here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down there, where oh, yeah. the cur building curves into that classroom, we had to actually shave off some of the some corners of wall. for her to be able to make the turn. I don't even. Uh, well, the building was designed long before anybody really gave much of a thought, but I still can't. I'm sorry. I mean, this looks like a bombshell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. 
Well, the kids, they were like, the teachers were like, well, middle schoolers are low, like, short of school. I don't think they're ready. Alright, we'll feel it, bro. I just came out. I took a third of all day. I wasn't getting it. Well, that door right there, isn't it? Huh? No, that's the door right there. No, no, it's yeah. probably from the old... The last oh, yeah. 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 You should. Yeah. 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 Last night. I watched her. You were hitting it. You hit the threes. Yeah. Right? You were awesome. And you were in it all. No, three minutes. Yeah. And you boom, boom, boom. And you were all over it. That was awesome. You all played more than the uh, four. development, 
used for um, whatever early release thing that we would do or change. Maybe we take a professional development day, waiver days no longer exist. You would have public hearing. You would also have to keep in mind your joint vocational school and your non-public trans for transportation, which means you'd have to go to their boards and get approval. So there's a long list of things that will be taking place. I gave you that document. Please feel free to read through it. I'll begin updating, continuing to update you on this through the next coming months as we move closer to schedules for the next school year. So calendars will be coming out. Our calendars are reflective of school days and typically students will be looking at same traditional school days and number of days but now those days translate into hours in which we cannot minimize our current number of hours without public hearings. So it's a little more convoluted. I tried to really minim tried to bring that down to a <coughs> working information, but like I said, I, I, we've had meetings with educational service centers, both Columbia and Mahoning County educational service centers, and they can't provide us with the most accurate detail as the translation of how the law is and how the ODE is prescribing our hours, uh, our days to hours. So I'll, I'll, as soon as I get more information, I'll provide that for you, but that kind of gives you an idea that's coming down the pike. And that's, that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. Item number five, Nutrition Inc. report. Tina's sick. Doesn't look like a report she, this evening. She went home sick today. Okay. Item number six, Principal's reports. My principal's report for Joshua Dixon is in your board share. I noticed, and I don't know if it's just because of my new laptop too, but when I go into board share now to open something, you almost have to go to the top and hit enable editing so that you could see it in the correct way. If you don't, it's kind of it looks more landscape than it should be. Um, so you can see it better there. Um, first, congratulations to the new board members. Thank you to all of our board members um, for we just appreciate your commitment. Really grateful to have you. I know you make some tough decisions, but thank you. Um, un under curriculum and professional development, walkthroughs, observations, and evaluations continue as our first rounds come to an end. Uh, January 29th is our next Race to the Top Transformation Team meeting. And as of the beginning of December, all Dixon staff has completed eight hours of SLO training. So we'll be ready to start um, working on some SLOs, um, looking at student growth measures as the other 50% piece of teacher performance. Under student achievement, OAA prep continues with intervention and enrichment. Our fifth graders will have a DARE graduation ceremony on Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Anyone that would like to attend is welcome. On Friday, January 17th, ends our second grading period in our first semester. Report cards will go home on January 24th, and all of our intervention assistance team meetings continue. Under health and wellness, Dixon students participated in the I believe it was Blue Cross Blue Shield and Radio Disney sponsored it. It was called Get Fit, Get Active, Get Fit, and they had to track um, times where they were active each day. We had 100% participation, and we won a Radio Disney dance party that they're coming in to do for our kids in March. The kids are really excited. They just found out today. PTO, the next meeting is January 22nd at 6 o'clock. Um, third and fifth grade intramurals have started. They'll run through February. Um, Mr. Hurdle is doing the fifth grade and Mrs. Moore is doing the third and fourth grade. Aiming High from the Family Recovery Center to, continues to come in K-4. And a special thank you to everybody. Uh, we did our seventh annual giving tree this year. Uh, I've got all staff and, and families that took ornaments, but especially I listed some of the supporters that went above and beyond this year. Uh, a parent, Mrs. Doherty, made a significant donation. Our Interact and NHS Club, GIM at a Sorority, Making Kids Count, PTO, Christ the King Church, and um, our local Rotary. And in addition to the gifts, and I did put 
the thank yous, there's a whole folder of thank yous that I sent to all of them in your board share as well so that you can see specifically who donated what. And I'd like to point out that in addition to all the ornaments, Rotary gave me money to finish ornaments by Food for Families and they donated um, a winter coat for every child that was on, on the giving tree. And I did then go ahead and list some dates upcoming in January. Uh, the main one would be the day of graduation. You're more than welcome to come on Thursday and um, the next PTO meeting if anybody wants to attend. And that is my report for January. Southside Middle School Good News Report. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the new board members as well. And the entire staff of the middle school would like to recognize our Board of Education and thank them for their hard work and their continued support uh, throughout the school year. Uh, music department, uh, the Southside Middle School Music Department held their annual holiday concerts right before the vacation. Uh, we had packed houses. Um, band and choir both are doing a great job of um, having students perform solos besides their um, you know, the entire, con the entire band and the entire choir performing uh, lots of solos, which I think is important, especially in middle school, gives those students some confidence uh, for when they get to the high school. And I want to thank uh, Mrs. Cowan and Mr. Chipperian for their, um, their hard work to pull off the concerts. Uh, also, just before Christmas vacation, our eighth grade class, members of our eighth grade class, went to Dixon uh, under Mrs. Silver's direction. And um, they worked with the younger, their younger schoolmates at Dixon. They shared holiday spirit through their writing abilities and through reading stories and working with younger students. Uh, something I know her students enjoy and our students get a lot out of um, working with the younger kids. Sports, all of our sports teams are continuing their winter sports seasons. Uh, we will be hosting a wrestling tournament this Saturday. This is our, our big Saturday to um, host wrestling. Uh, basketball teams will begin tournament play as early as February the 8th. And uh, we'll be hosting some girls basketball tournament uh, play here at um, the high school and at Southside. We're going to probably be utilizing both gyms. Um, Mrs. Sharsham already hit on the continuing evaluation process. Uh, she also hit on OAA prep is, con is going on also at Southside. Some important dates coming up tomorrow. Uh, we have our annual Geography B, which is one of our fun activities, academic activities, but, but it's really um, interesting to watch um, you know, uh, the students, how much they know about geography, you know, national, world, so on and so forth. 115 in the auditorium. Um, Coming up quickly here, February 5th, the Spelling Bee is at 1 o'clock in the auditorium and followed up two days later by our Science Fair, uh, which will be held in the middle school. Uh, so any of those you'd like to attend, we'd love to see you there. And coming up quickly uh, by next board meeting, uh, parent-teacher conferences, the second round, will be held um, from 3 to 9. And that is it for Southside. Okay. The high school report is also under board share, and uh, I also would like to congratulate the new board members and thank uh, all the board members for their service and commitment to the students of Columbiana. Uh, <clears throat> under academics and curriculum, uh, uh, Mrs. Miso has presented uh, how to use Google Forms, and uh, we're, we're getting we're all kind of new to uh, Google and and using the forms and she presented to our staff uh, just last night and uh, it was really well received. The staff members uh, really attentive and she got a great response back. Uh, Mrs. Waller helped conduct the financial aid night on January 8th with uh, Crestview and Newtonia. That was for senior parents and helping them fill out financial aid forms and uh, other issues on how to pay for college. Um, on the 21st, our 10th graders will be visiting the Career Center to look at all their programs. And on February 6th, the juniors are going to have an opportunity to go to Pittsburgh for the uh, National College Fair, um, where they'll be exposed to over 200 different colleges. So that's exciting. St under student events, um, winter senior night will be Tuesday, February 4th. That's the, at the boys' basketball game against Southern Local. 
Um, new NHS inductions will be in February. Uh, applications are going to be going out to the students on the 3rd. And Winter Homecoming is this Friday and the dance will be Saturday night. Under uh, Students Community, high school was presented with a uh, certificate of appreciation by the U.S. Department of State uh, for being a 2013-14 youth exchange participant. Um, they visited us and uh, sat down with us for about an hour and looked at our school, so it was uh, nice, nice to have them in. National Honor Society will be helping uh, Angels for Animals on the 16th of January. Under athletics, boys varsity basketball, they're currently 4-6. and six. They had a big win over Bristol High School. They broke uh, Bristol's 30-game win streak, and uh, my wife Tracy is a graduate from Bristol, so that was nice special. Uh, girls varsity basketball off to a really good record. Uh, they're nine, currently 9-1. Nine and one. And uh, congratulations to Bailey Muck, who set, recently set a single game uh, scoring record at 42 points. And the team with a single game uh, scoring record of 104 points. Under wrestling, um, the wrestlers won their first dual meet for Coach Canal. So uh, congratulations to them. And we are going to host the ITCL league meet. Um, coming up on February the 8th. And I just put a couple OHSAA proposals. Um, I believe I'll be um, voting on the, the one in here. And, um, it's to increase the number of team members from its current 18 to 22 and then in 2014 and then to increase the number of games from 27 to 32 in 2015, and that's both baseball and softball. And that uh, ticket prices for state tournaments will increase from eight to ten dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Public input, item number seven. No one here. Item number eight. I don't think we need a first executive session. Item number nine. I move to consider approving the December 2013 financial report. I second it. Discussion? Roll call, please. Whitmer? Yes. Heron? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Item number 10. Consider approving a change in contract status for the, from probationary to regular for Peggy Mills, custodian, as recommended by the superintendent, effective January 17, 2014. I'll second that. Discussion? Roll call, please. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Karen? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 11. Make a motion to consider appointment of a Columbiana County Career and Technical Center board member for the 2014, 2015, 2016, a three year term. I'll second that. Mark Hudson. <laughs> you seconded it? You still second it, Tony? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any discussion? Keep up. Keep up. Roll call, please. Clark? Yes. Mark Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Edson? Upstain. Motion passes. Item 12. To make a motion to consider approving the appointment of the following personnel for the 2013-14 school year as recommended by the superintendent. Compensation in accordance to the board approved schedules pending verification of all credentials. And retroactive to the first day worked. Uh, substitute teacher Christine Lapicus mm -hmm. and substitute support staff Justin Hoffman. I second it. Discussion. Roll call, please. Bernco? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 13. I move to consider approving the following as volunteer for a pupil activity program for the 2013-2014 school year as recommended by the superintendent, 8th grade girls basketball coach volunteer Rob Hall, Dixon classroom volunteer Rebecca Boucher, Boucher and Jessica Winters. Second that. 
Discussion? Roll call, please. Whitworth? Yes. Heron? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Motion passes. Item 14. Consider approving employment of the following personnel as director, supervisor, or coach of a pupil activity program for the 2013-2014 school year as recommended by the superintendent with compensation in accordance with the board approved schedules pending verification of all credentials. At Varsity Boys and Girls Track Coach, Robert Altenau. I'll second that. Discussion. Roll call, please. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brown? Yes. Motion passes. Item 15. Make a motion to consider approving the incorporation of weighted grades into the 2014-2015 Columbiana High School Program of Studies per the document of explanation provided with this agenda. I'll second that. Discussion? Hey, real, real quick, in your document that you received, the, the, the D was marked as a 1, that D would be a 2. Okay? That's the only change in that, that, do, that document was in. Correct. We're ready to do it. Any further discussion? I, for one, think that it's a great idea, something that's long been needed. I think it encourages everybody to attain, you know, not worry about getting a worse grade and having their grade point average go down. I, I agree. Roll call, please. Clark? Yes. Bronco? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes, item 16. I'd like to make a motion to consider approving the Columbiana High School Academic Challenge team trip to the Small School National Championship Tournament in Minneapolis, Minnesota, May 2nd through the 5th, 2014. That's two school days. Per the itinerary provided with the agenda. I second it. Discussion? Roll call, please. Bronco? Yes. Weber? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion passes. Item number 17. I move to consider approving 2014 annual Ohio School Board Association membership dues in the amount of $3,300. Second it. Discussion? Roll call, please. Whitmer? Yes. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Brown Yes. Motion passes. You better keep it brief. 18. <laughs> President's report. Well, I've been told to keep <laughs> that brief. <laughs> Bad idea. I just do have a couple of comments. First of all, I want to thank everyone that's here. I'd love to see more people here. Um, and I want to welcome both Scott Karen and Mike Clark to the Board of Education. I think you're going to find this um, enlightening, challenging, and rewarding. At least I have. I'd also like to congratulate the High School Academic Challenge team. I think that's great that you guys are competing, and I think that's, you know, I just, that's really good to hear that that many kids are interested in it. Um, as far as weighted grades, I've already said, I think that's something we've needed to do for a long time. Back when my daughter was in school, yeah, there was something called the Region Scholarship was wonderful you, if you were attending a state school. And the state schools really didn't know how many valedictorians, how many people had 4.0s, and the bottom line was they awarded very, you know, very good scholarships. We always missed out on a lot of opportunities, and I think this is a step in the right direction. As far as the shape of Southside Middle School, I wrote down a whole page of comments, and I'm not going to actually give them because I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. However, a couple of years ago, I was given a sign, a yard sign, by I think the cheerleaders, it was called Clipper Pride. And, you know, I still have it, and I noticed today that Dr. Hurdle still has his in his yard. And I think we want, what that told me was, the students wanted us to have pride in them and in this school. We want our children, our grandchildren, the kids that go to this school system, to be proud of their school. 
I know a lot of people in this community, and I've done work for a lot of people in this community that are proud of Columbiana. However, this evening I saw something that in the six months since the last time I was through the Southside Middle School 5th and 6th grade wing, that nobody should be proud of. That building is in bad shape and it is deteriorating far faster than we thought it would six months ago when we talked about what are we going to do. The voters in this community have spoken three times. I'm not sure if we should say G. The fourth time should be a charm. That's something that this board, not just the president, <coughs> will need to decide. But I think that's going to be a very difficult thing that we have to decide. Um, I would like the people in this community that are so proud of this community to really see what this building looks like today. Uh, I think I heard some people that had comments about Mr. Mook may have made some things up to make things look even worse. I really don't think anybody made anything up and I would invite everyone and I hope that this is printed to please come to this school and let's take a tour and see what shape the building is in. On that note, that's the only comments I have for this evening and again thanks all of you for being here. OSBA Legislative Liaison Report, item number 19. No report. Item number 20, OSBA Student Achievement Liaison Report. There's no report. Item number 20, Columbia County Career Center Board Member Report. The only thing I will say is that the Board of Education of the Career Center is meeting tomorrow night for our own organizational meeting. Um, and I'll probably have another report in February. Item number 22. Date of next board <coughs> meeting, Tuesday, February 11th, 2014, 6.30 p.m. in the High School Media <coughs> Center, referring confirmation to organizational meeting agenda item 15. Item number 23. Can I have a motion? Motion to consider an executive session for employment dismissal for compensation of an employee of the investigation of charges or complaints against an employee. Possible litigation of matters required to be kept confidential by the federal law rules and state statutes as defined by ORC 121.22. I'll second that. Discussion? Roll call, please. Karen? Yes. Clark? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Armstrong? Yes. Whitmer? Yes. And finally, item 24, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to pass. Motion to pass. Motion to pass. Motion to pass. Motion to